Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi. No, I'm not in the lab today. Beautiful day here in Sydney, so I thought I'd get out into the park and film something out here. There was a big news item today, which I thought I'd comment on it. Some pretty big news today. MakerBot, who make the 3D open source printer that everyone knows and loves, you might even have one. Well, they've just got 10 million bucks in venture capital funding. Beauty. So you've got to take your hat off to Bree and the other guys at uh, MakerBot and give you congratulations for a pretty good score, 10 million bucks in venture capital funding. Unbelievable. Now, it's not really surprising because the MakerBot sold like over 5,000 units and that's well over uh, 5 million bucks in income, I believe. It could even be uh, double that or something. I'm not sure, but it's around about that figure. And they've scored all this money. It's not just one investor, though. It's actually a group of investors, including, I believe, uh, Bree's uh, parents or something like that. But I think most of the funding comes from one venture capital firm called the Foundry Group. And uh, they have a they have a history of investing in, in this sort of stuff and, and they apparently really know open source and they're behind it and all that sort of stuff, which is fantastic. But, eh. Uh, now, someone unsurprisingly, the Foundry Group have actually tried to compare the uh, 3D printing uh, revolution to the early microcomputer uh, hobby startup with the Altair and the Apple One kits and stuff like that. And they've also tried to compare it to uh, the early days of the, or the success of uh, HP's LaserJet printer, which made uh, really uh, laser printing um, and, you know, personal printing, uh, to, in this case 2D on paper, um, commercially viable with the LaserJet. But that was done much earlier with uh, Xerox Park. And, not a bad comparison, I guess, but I don't necessarily totally agree with it because the 3D printing uh, industry is, is always going to be several orders of magnitude more niche than the, uh, micro, uh, the, than the early microcomputer industry and the boom of microcomputers. But I think it was still a brilliant move on their part to invest in MakerBot. They'll make their money back in buttloads. So what can we expect? from this uh, venture capital funding. Well, I think it's gonna be a brilliant thing for MakerBot and for the industry, in general terms, that is. Now, uh, MakerBot are working on a third generation MakerBot machine, and this funding will uh, be able to, they'll be able to make that absolutely brilliant, uh, lower cost, higher performance, everyone wins. That'll be in the first year or so, maybe first two years, things like that, things will go pretty much the same as they always have. You won't mo notice much difference, except better products at lower prices. But what will happen after that? Well, I think you'll see the death of the do-it-yourself unit. The kit will vanish. Why? Because real businesses and real corporations don't sell hobby kits. If that's for kids and amateurs. Give me a break. I think it's just inevitable that the kit is gonna die because once you start actually producing more advanced product to try and reach to a bigger market, it's gonna to come to a point where you're just gonna be able to manufacture it cheaper, and it's gonna be cheaper and simpler to sell it as a finished product than it will be to make the kit and keep it as an open source hardware project. Now, I'm not gonna make any uh, prediction about whether or not they'll drop it as open source hardware, but it'll just become, I think, too difficult and too much trouble and too expensive and not worth anyone's while to build their own MakerBot anymore. That's, I think it's just inevitable. Now I'm not saying that the players involved don't have their heart in the right place, I'm sure they do, but I think they'll find that eventually it's just not a viable model if you want to grow the business and they have to grow this business because these venture capital firms are there for one reason and one reason only is to make a return on their investment and to do it reasonably quickly. And not only just make a return on their investment, they want to make a shitload, an absolute buttload of money in return for their investment. So the, uh, you know, if the MakerBot is now a $5 million uh, in business, they want to turn that into a $50 million business, 100 million, even $500 million. They want to dominate the industry and then it gets on to the end game.
currently a MakerBot second generation kit sells for about 1200 bucks or, or so, and the fully assembled unit is about 2500 Now, I think their goal will be to ultimately get a sub $1,000 3D printer fully assembled. And I think that'd be fantastic. Heck, I'd buy one, I'd jump at it. Maybe even 500 bucks. That'd be my goal if I was uh, investing in something like this and trying to, you know, uh, trying to sort of jump on the early bandwagon of some 3D printing revolution. Once it hits that sub $1,000 market, $500 market, it almost becomes like a consumer toy not just a niche engineering thing. But at that sort of money, you get every engineer on the planet buying one just to play with. It's just one of those no-brainer decisions once it gets to that point. And I think that will be their goal because they'll want to increase margins and they'll want to uh, increase their market share and stuff like that. And you can't really do that at $2,500. I don't think that makes a revolution. So just look at the numbers for this thing. If you're talking about turning this into, say, a $50 million business, for example, and you've got a $500 MakerBot, well, how many, fully assembled, of course, how many do you have to make? Well, simple math, you've got to make out and sell 100,000 of these things. And if you want to make a $100 million business, 200,000, et cetera. You start talking serious volumes, and you're not going to get that with kits. So it's going to have to go fully assembled. And of course, you can't really start making these sort of volumes and meeting these price points without getting it made in China. So look out for the Chinese MakerBot movement. Drop shipped. So where does that leave us in uh, three, maybe five years time? Well, the VCs will start getting very twitchy and they'll be looking to play the end game and cash in on this thing because they'll want to make a buttload of money out of this. And they'll probably try and do it in one of two ways. Either uh, sell it to somebody who that is, I have no idea. The market could be totally different in uh, three, five years' time, or maybe they'll uh, look to float MakerBot or something like that. That's the old model. You can still make money from that. Who knows? But either way, once that happens, well, that'll probably be the end of uh, sort of you know the open source MakerBot uh, company that we know today. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I guess, but it's just a bit of a shame, really. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think this is really a bad thing at all. And I think it's great for MakerBot and it's great for the industry. It's a huge score. And I think it's great that these VC companies are actually willing to uh, back uh, you know, small companies like MakerBot and actually see these revolutions come in. It's fantastic. That's what VCs have always done. That's what they'll continue to do, which is great. I just think, well, there's nothing unusual about it. You know, I, that's really my only problem. Bit of a shame, really. I thought uh, maybe that uh, MakerBot might have chosen a different strategy and just gone on on their own, just capitalizing on the money they've made. But they've decided to take venture capital funding. Best of luck to them. I have no problem at all. And I hope I can buy a cheap MakerBot soon. It'd be fantastic. Anyway, catch you next time.